Hey guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, while I've got one here, just keeping on the subject of catalytic converter efficiency, so your PO420, we've done a lot of videos on um, looking at scan tool data to see how it affects it and how we can pick out when it's done it. Um, now I want to talk about some things that can cause it. So while I've got one here, uh, we've got an exhaust leak and that has gone through and damaged the catalytic converter and that's why we're getting the PO420. So some people ask, how can an exhaust leak damage a catalytic converter? And in this case, how can an exhaust leak cause a lean condition? Um, that's what this car came in for with really. It's got a lean condition and then subsequently we've got a catalyst code from it. So I want to show you um, how that's happened, what it, what it affects and um, how we came to the conclusion. Okay, so here's our ManiCat. So this is our manifold and catalyst built into one. You're all aware of them. Um, it's off an older Triton and someone's already had a go at this with some cracks that you can see that have tried to be welded up but um, whether they haven't got them all or more cracks have come in this is the cause of our root problem so um, like I said won't go into the data we've already seen what a bad cat looks like um, looks terrible from the rear row too and it's also running quite lean so why is it running lean from an exhaust leak if we go in a bit here you'll see some of the cracks that I'm talking about so this one here down here and um, what's important to note in this instance is those cracks are before the front oxygen sensor. So a exhaust pulse is not just um, positive pressure. You'll have positive pressure if this exhaust valve is open, but then if this one's closed, as the um, exhaust gases rush past here, like a Venturi, it will actually create some suction in this side of it. And if we've got a crack there, then if you imagine the, the um, fuel to put a pressure sensor on here, you will see a plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. And every time it um, does a plus, it's going to push a little bit of exhaust gas out. We hear it, we smell it, but that's all um, the same mix of air fuel ratio. So the oxygen sensor doesn't really care if it loses a bit of that. It's just losing some of the same ratio. It sees it the same. But every time it sucks in, it's going to suck raw oxygen. And the O2 sensor is going to see that oxygen. It's going to say, I'm extremely lean and I'm going to put some more fuel in and that is what ultimately has gone through and damaged this catalyst because it's um, got massive positive fuel trims over fueling itself thinking it's doing the right thing when really there is no lean condition it's just oxygen sucked in um, it's added too much fuel that's gone through and, and got this cat extremely hot um, so the oxygen sensor sits um, I won't try and roll this over at the moment got the camera set up but the oxygen sensor sits after that and um, it's what's causing the problem so, well, sorry, not the oxygen sensor, but the cracks. Um, important to note also that any um, cracks that you've got before the second oxygen sensor, so the post cat, that's going to drastically affect its readings as well. And that's going to sometimes give you these fake PO420 catalyst efficiency codes because for the same reasons, if it's seeing a lot of excessive oxygen being sucked in and read there, it's so seriously going to distort it. So this car's got a new manifold on it now. The catalyst is built into the manifold. Um, looking at the data, everything looks great. So um, basically we're getting uh, 700 millivolts from the rear oxygen sensor um, throughout steady cruise when it's red hot. I'm sure you're gonna see it rise on full throttle if you do a pull and you're going to see it lower off um, registering lean when you're on D-cell. That's just doing what it should, but we're not getting any of those you know, up and down waves like we'd see from a front oxygen sensor. The catalyst is doing its job. Um, fuel trims are looking good, so we want to see fuel trims within about plus or minus 10% is, is the sweet spot. If you're getting close to those 10s, you know, it's worth looking for a problem. This one, we're staying around the 5, which is about all you could hope for from an old car like this. Um, never going to get perfectly around zero, but this is doing quite well. We've been servicing it, it's not using any excessive oil through its life. It's um, never had internal coolant leaks, so I'm not expecting anything to be able to go through poison this cat so quite confident that you should get years of use out of it until maybe it cracks again through age if it makes it that far it just doesn't look like the greatest design but I'm um, confident this should be fine so if you've got any things like this that you're, you're wondering about like how does an exhaust leak cause this or you've got something in your shop you're not sure of get on to Tat Assist and you can also always log something on there and um, we've got a whole team of of tech guys on there that can help you out and also every TAT member um, has access to see that and can throw their two cents in. So you, a lot of the time you'll find someone has experienced the problem exactly the same as you've got in your workshop. They say, look, it was really quirky. We did this, this and this, but this is actually what caused it. This is the testing that I did. Might even just jog your, your brain to get you doing a test that gets you led down the path to help um, get this car fixed. So jump onto there through the TAT homepage, get into TAT Assist, log any cases that you've got, and we'll give you a hand. But um, that's that for this one, so thanks for watching.